And now uh, we move ahead with the last panel for today. And the topic for the same is PR and communication management in APAC and India, examining the trends, the growth, and the gaps. Please join me in welcoming a panelist to the screens. Up first, Ms. Chosna Dash Nanda DS Krupp. She is the AVP Corporate Communications. Ms. Kargi Dube, PR and Communications Lead, APAC, Open Text. Mr. Ziauddin Adil, Founder and Managing Director, Master PR. Mr. Abhishek Gulyani, CEO, Hill and Norton Strategies. And this session will be moderated by Ms. Pamda Dingra, Founder Director, Lateral Sutra. Hello, everyone. Since we are a little early, let me just quickly tell the team to log in right now. And you can take it from there. Hi, uh, hi Adil, long time. In fact, uh, Mamta had said she's logging in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. It was a support to start at 2.45 p.m. So I'll just quickly text. Hello, Ms. Stingra. Good seeing you. Hello. Hi. Good to see you all. Uh, I think Abhishek is the one. Uh, yes. I presume he's going to join us sometime. So you can you can start. I'll just text him. Now that we are early, let's utilize the time to our advantage. Yeah, yeah. He just called me. He wanted yeah. to clarify on the internal comm bit. So I think uh, the flow is quite simple. Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys have five minutes extra in case you want to utilize it now that we are starting early. So okay. I'll leave it at your uh, sole discussion now. Yeah, sure. See you guys. Thank you so much. Thank Over you. Over to you, Mamta. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So a quick introduction, I think, because it's essential since I am not so much in the PR realm right now. Uh, currently, I'm a podcast. I'm also doing podcasting. But uh, yeah, I've been a consultant um, and an independent um, PR professional, 22 decades of experience, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, happy to be here, happy to be connected with all of you. I think uh, today's agenda is quite clear. But if there are any specific points that you want me to ask um, any of you, each of you, then you could just uh, nudge me and let me know. Sure, we'll keep it very free flowing so that we can take on uh, all of it. I think most of the other co-panelists have worked very closely or are currently also working in the APAC region. Right. Um, so that makes it, you know, more probably relevant for them. Mm. Uh, however, having worked in that region, I'll probably just say a few words, but uh, should we wait for uh, the others? Abhishek is joining, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He is. I, I think we are a little early, so that's okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think uh, we must take this opportunity to first thank uh, Karan for taking this, uh, you know, initiative of getting people together and this third edition of the Exchange for Media PR and COPCOM 30 yeah. under 30 summit and the awards that are there. I'm sure the kids are extremely <laughs> excited about these awards. It's yeah. a great way to actually. Uh, recognize talent and also to uh, motivate them. So yeah. thanks for that. And of course, also to Exchange for Media, Dr. Batra, etc. Uh, all the team that has put together this whole thing. I know the kind of hard work they did uh, to get, uh, you know, to get the jury to <laughs> put together their comments etc and um, the criteria was extremely good we had some great mm. um, you know entries that were there some of them were excellent uh, so we'll wait until four to begin I think I will not take the sheen off from that account mm. but uh, I think Nandani was bang on to say that there are great uh, kids who are taking on and um, as um, and I'm sure it's um, I mean in our uh, phase most of the professionals have been into PR by chance and not by choice Sorry. but a lot of kids today come in uh, by choice you know to yeah. get into uh, communication so obviously that uh, whole bit about um, you know getting um, trained in PR communication has 
become mandatory or a lot of people are going in for that kind of thing which is a good thing for the industry yeah, I, guess. I, th I think it's a great uh, kicker that you just put in Jyotsna and uh, you know just to take the mantle forward from there uh, since my journey is, has been like by default uh, but it's great to make choices and make choices that are informed um, it's a great time indeed to be in the communication sector and um, the privileged ones are really making it to PR because PR is no longer shelled and contained to very, very, you know, um, watertight uh, 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 ways of uh, uh, like, like uh, ways of conducting PR or the practice that back then how we had it uh, in the day. And it's exciting because there is so much uh, digital, there's so much AI, there, there are just so many things around which uh, the communication sector is pivoting. And that's where I would like to you know, keep bringing you guys back into the conversation that in your uh, area and sectors of expertise, how is it different? How are you applying and how is this uh, game really changing uh, so rapidly and differently? And uh, Gargi, a quick, yeah. um, you know, uh, intro yeah. from you also, like, because you yeah. are in Australia, right? You are based yes, out. so I'm based out of Melbourne, but yeah. I actually, communications was a choice for me. So I did mass comm, I did my PR and cop comm from Xavier's Bombay. And then I started my agency journey. I've been an agency person. I think from heart, I'm still one, <laughs> even though I've moved to the comp side. <laughs> um, but uh, so I've worked in India for quite a bit, like four or five years. Then I moved to Singapore. There I managed APAC and, you know, Southeast Asia mandates. So gained a lot of experience over there and then eventually moved to Australia two years back. So finally made the jump from agency to comps. <laughs> yeah, but uh, essentially, I love what I do. And I am so happy to, you know, have this opportunity to share the fact I, what I love about my job right now is that I get to use all that experience from across the region. Um, so it's lovely. I mean, I am a bit intimidated seeing the panel and, you know, seeing all the whole speakers and hosts coming in for this. Um, Me too. Apologies. Me too. I don't know <laughs> I am the intimidated by this. <laughs> <laughs> so from the get-go, just uh, I'm saying out loud, if I fumble or anything, it's just my nerves. <laughs> It's all, it's all mutual, okay? So I think Abhishek is also there with us and it's just the perfect time. Adil, Abhishek, great to have you guys here. Jyotsna, Gargi, um, what a delight. And uh, PR and communication landscape is continuing to evolve and we have been listening it like forever that it's one of the most dynamic sectors. And with some unprecedented and unexpected turn of events that we have seen in last few years, um, there are disruptive changes that have occurred in the world of PR as well. Uh, more and more campaigns getting into digital PR realms, still new trends and industry patterns that are getting built up year on year. Uh, industry trends are important to keep up uh, for PR professionals today more than ever. So just in light of that, uh, kickstarting today's uh, panel on uh, PR and communication management in APAC and India, ex examining the trends, growths and gaps. And I'm so very privileged to have a great um, panel and be hosting it. Uh, Jyotsna Dash Nanda, AVP Corporate Com DS Group, uh, Gargi Dube, you could just wave in and say a hi maybe to everyone. <laughs> Uh, PR and comms lead APAC Open Techs Australia, Ziauddin Adil, founder and managing director, master at PR Bangladesh, and Abhishek Bhiliani, CEO, Hill and Knowlton Strategies. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you, Mamta. And myself, Mamta. Yeah, I'm the independent PR consultant and podcast. Thank you, Mamta. Am I audible, Mamta? Yes, yes, you're good. Okay, all right. So just to start the, the discussion right from the word go, what are some of the practices, trends, and issues that you, you know, individually feel that are impacting PR and comms uh, in Asia PAC specifically? And I would like uh, to start the panel with Josna. I'd like to invite you on this and just have your views be shared. Uh, thanks, Mamta. Uh, but I would say that PR in Asia is relatively young compared to the US and has uh, does have certain distinctive characteristics 
which sets it apart from the other parts of the world, like the uh, in the earlier panel, Indu, etc., said that you know there is a lot which is there in the B and C class cities, and urban and rural are not the same, etc., which is very typical to India. But in the Asia Pacific region, which is actually becoming very very important for most brands to be present in or to focus on, or that's where business is, and India obviously stands out in that. But uh, I would say that every market in Asia Pacific, though they are different, but the uh, common challenges in finding the right people, both be it, uh, you know, on the um, corporate side or on the agency side remains, you know, the first obstacle is attracting them to the industry. Not many people uh, have dreamt as we were, you know, talking. So it's not by choice. It's more uh, was more by chance. But now gradually people seem to be coming into it. So the role of, you know, parents is still quite important in terms of determining their children's career path, what is the way forward, what are the growth opportunities that are there. And sometimes that can steer them towards traditional career paths, but it's hard to find good people that are there. And that's a common uh, thread across you know, all uh, markets that are there, whether that's, you know, at the uh, beginner level, mid-level, senior level, uh, across all of it, it is there. And um, from what my understanding is that uh, most agencies are short-staffed in the Asia-Pacific region. And while we might talk, you know, understaffed, basically. So uh, we I was recently talking to somebody as who was um, head of one of the biggest companies in the world, and her team in Asia consists of only five people. Now, in the U.S., big companies have hundreds of people in communication. It's true that U.S. is a major market, but when you consider the diversity of markets in Asia, it's hard to manage without any uh, you know, appropriate headcount that is there. So appropriate funding, obviously, is an important thing. Most companies in Asia, obviously, spend only about 10% of the marketing budget on PR. And the remaining 90% on advertising. So advertising, media buying, or digital marketing. However, the situation seems to be improving and we have observed some increase in communication budgets. But the industry um, has become, I mean, more valued. Uh, we are more at the, you know, strategic levels, at the drawing table when uh, there are strategic decisions being taken. But, uh, you know, that's one of the key issues that are there. And uh, as was being discussed in the earlier panel where Indu mentioned that, you know, with AI or technology, the kind of, um, you know, uh, crises that can happen is something that we need to be aware of. But um, I look at it as more in terms of, you know, the increasing importance of uh, crisis communication. So in an age where social media and instant communication is there, organizations can face a crisis anytime. In the future, crisis management will become even more important with organizations needing to be prepared to respond quickly as well as, you know, effectively. You know, you have to be authentic in your storytelling and to respond to any negative publicity or crisis situation. So PR professionals will need to develop strategies that focus on identifying the potential crisis situation and then monitoring social, you know, constantly monitoring social media channels on a real-time basis, developing these crisis communication plans so that it can be activated as soon as crisis hits. And uh, another important aspect I would say would be, you know, the growing importance of employee advocacy. All corporates, all clients, all brands, you know, have this uh, uh, urgent need to uh, for uh, talent attraction and retention. So with the rise of social media and the increasing importance of, you know, the authenticity, transparency that organizations need to undergo, organizations will still need to focus more on developing these relationships that are there with the employees, you know, and encouraging them basically to become you know, advocates of the uh, organization. I always say that, you know, an employee is the best em brand ambassador of an organization, you know. So PR professionals will need to develop these strategies that focus on engaging with the employees and empowering them to share their experiences and opinions with their network. So that social media, uh, uh, you know, a policy. Yesterday, I was speaking to a few of my counterparts in the industry and I wanted to understand if they have, you know, social media policies, etc. What is it that makes it, you know, 
flexible and at the same time you have to also protect your reputation so keeping all those uh, in mind you know i will not go on to talk about you know data analytics obviously that's the most important thing and i my most favorite line is that uh, communication today is algorithmic Mm. You know, it has to be based on data. So those tools that are there, how do PR professionals? And I'm, you know, Asia Pacific is doing it very well. I have worked very closely with Talkworker. There are many agencies which are there in India also, but I find Talkworker, uh, I think they're based out of Singapore and they're awesome at their um, analysis, etc. Though we have Viziki, which is coming up, which is specially for uh, PR agencies, which is doing equally well and uh, we, I'm sure will continue obviously but um, that's what I would leave my thought with and let the other panelists take on. Yeah I think you've just set the agenda right in place with all these uh, pointers uh, Josta, and I think I'm going to move the buck now to um, Abhishek and uh, really listen into your views on what what really while uh, it's, it's very well pointed out that uh, uh, understaffed, uh, being understaffed or, or, you know, low on investments and being a, di a diverse region, they are obviously their own set of challenges that APAC uh, presents, not, not as of today, but it has always, always been the case, but specifically given the background, backdrop of AI and where we are talking that so many jobs will actually get replaced. Abhishek, I would just like to bring you in the conversation and have your piece on uh, in this light, how do you see the practice and the trends uh, evolving or changing in the current uh, PR and comms management in Asia Pac? Abhishek, you're on mute. I think we can't hear you. Can everybody hear Abhishek? I can't. No, no, we can't. Abhishek? No. He's not audible. Abhishek is not audible. I can hear you now. Oh, no. Is that you, uh, Adil? That's me. I, oh, okay. I, I don't hear Abhishek. Okay. Abhishek, we can't hear you. So can I can I have the same question passed to Gargi by the time you are fixing the audio? Abhishek, if you can hear us. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Uh, so now I'll, I'll come in before you pass out the question to Gargi. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but thank you so much for the initial comments. And I think it's a very, very important topic with uh, with trends that are emerging, uh, not only in India, but I think uh, I think India, APAC, and, and globally. See, what we have to set context to first is that the pandemic did prove to be a, a trigger point that kind of reoriented the field of communications. And I think made both agencies and uh, communication experts kind of re-strategize the business and roadmap uh, that we want to take going forward, right? Uh, and and that matter of media and content consumption is, has got standardized across the world. It's not only uh, India and APAC, the way consumers in a general sense or our audiences in a general sense are consuming, uh, uh, you know, information or content is kind of getting very equal in that sense, right? And I think more importantly in, in, in 2023, the agency landscape, and I can speak from an agency perspective, has really gone through a, a profound transformation uh, with more and more traditional agencies now are looking at more being more comprehensive uh, full service entities and, and that should answer the question that you were trying to raise in terms of whether how do we look at staff how do we look at our colleagues how do we kind of look at the dynamic and structure uh, of an organization or agencies per, uh, per se and if you really look at it the interesting data is that from an agency perspective, in today's world, 40% of the revenue is actually coming outside of the traditional media uh, services. So you're actually selling more avenues which are uh, encompassing on areas such as research, ESD is beginning to pick up, content creation, influencer management. And if you really deep dive into what the work all agencies are doing, there is a lot of creative output that's actually coming out uh, from what we call as traditional uh, uh, PR agencies, right? And that, I think, shift is really the adaptability and the broad spectrum with which we are kind of uh, right now uh, living in. And I think the third part, which is very, very important, is the acceleration of a globalized world, right? We are today living in a borderless world, which cuts across India, APAC, uh, and other countries. And therefore, it is becoming very, very important for agencies to who are multi-market, 
they have a competitive edge because you're able to scale up uh, for your clients. And I can give you a couple of examples. We work uh, with an with a leading uh, IT services client, which actually kicked off from India, but now we do US, UK, Europe, Middle East, and this scalability is pretty quick. We work with a startup uh, who now wants to enter US market, and therefore the scalability is pretty quick. They've been talking to us about Singapore, so therefore. What you're able to do is 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 in this borderless world how you're able to communicate, uh, communicate together and and therefore uh, to answer your question on staff and how do you look at uh, look at that in the challenges that we are all are facing in terms of talent availability I think collaboration of the world and collaboration of a borderless world is the future keeping in mind three trends that a the audience consumption of of media and content has evolved. Uh, that's one. Second is that you're just not a traditional, if I may say, media relations output agency. You have to be multifaceted. And that's not because agencies want to push it. Also because of the fact that today, agencies have to look at a communication challenge rather than a media relations challenge. Because the external world has evolved and because the consumption of challenges or or we may say challenges that CEOs and corporate communication directors and experts are facing are more evolved in nature and just not, uh, you know, just not. The requirements focused. have changed completely. Yeah. So I think that too. And then the third is the fact that we're living in a world which is, which is borderless today. I mean, we, it, it transcends, uh, you know, uh, countries. It's, it's, it has to be multi-market. So therefore you have to look at, uh, challenges and really the Indian companies are also getting extremely competitive and ambitious and therefore you'll have to bring in that scalability of services and geography in that sense. Now how uh, each of us as agencies or each of us as as comms experts do it is something that uh, you know requires a much larger or a much broader discussion uh, but I think that's the initial comments that I want to uh, you know bring in right now. Interesting viewpoint, Vishik, indeed, and I'm going to come back to a few of them because uh, what you said about the changing landscape of cons consumption of the content, in so many ways, if I, we were to really look at ourselves as a consumer, I think hardly any of us is actually going and consuming media because in the traditional way of media, even before the news breaks on like an HD or a TOI, it's all over on an Instagram or, a, you know, another social media handle. So that's become such an in, um, informal and unstructured uh, format of percolation of information that uh, you have to, you know, even if you don't want before to. I, uh, before I kind of you pass on, I just want to add, and, and I know, Mamta, you run a very successful podcast. I, I, I want to add on to that. There is no discussion that I'm doing with a CEO or a founder or a Copcom lead who's not thinking of a podcast right now. Yes, absolutely. Now, totally. my question is, are we as agencies ready to be able to offer that solution? When I was saying that we need to get more integrated, wow. more communication aligned. I think it's important for us to get ready to what the market is evolving it and Absolutely. therefore we need to shift make that shift. Absolutely. And here I would like to uh, bring in Dargi because you do uh, and of course uh, Adil uh, because both of you do bring in uh, an aspect and, and represent uh, a part of Asia pack which behaves very differently. You know, so so first to you, Gagi, that uh, now now sitting in Australia, how do you look at the entire comms? Uh, um, you know, uh, navigate this whole uh, comms landscape, and how is it different? How is it really different? To be honest, at the gist of what we do, it still remains same. Uh, you'll be surprised what makes news more or less remains same <laughs> across the globe. A very big challenge is the media landscape, as you mentioned, uh, even the traditional media pool, if you say so, because in India, the, you know, just the sheer number of publications and journalists and influencers that you have is, I mean, so many times much more than what we see in Southeast Asia markets or, you know, in, in uh, Australia as well. I think Indonesia might come a little bit closer to how in you know India behaves in terms of uh, public relations, but for the other markets, it's very difficult. Uh, I don't think anybody has a doubt that we live in a region which is you know business is booming, and I'm very fortunate to have been part of most of the discussions where people realize the importance of PR that is today and comms as a whole. We do get a seat at the table. What I would really want to point out here is like Jyotsna said about, you know, the budgets, comms budgets being tight. 
being on the comms side, I feel one very big responsibility we have is to guide the agencies properly, to have them as partners. For example, if I can only do two interviews in a, uh, in a quarter, I will make sure those, those to count for my you know, salespeople who are going out and pushing out my brand and getting the customers. Um, it should not be just the tick in the box that, okay, I got this random opportunity and your face is there on this publication. And I feel the comms teams really need to play a very important role over there. In terms of using technology, definitely, and I'm very happy, a lot of the legwork that I used to do as an executive now really doesn't rest upon them. Uh, how, you know, uh, on point these technologies are at this point, I am not too sure if I'll be very honest. I'm sure we, we everybody has a tool for media monitoring, but everybody is still filtering out nonsense from there. It's based on keywords. It's not always perfect. I would love to see it go to a point where, you know, I can get anything about my brand and it's all perfect and synchronized and, you know, the way we want it. Um, the other thing is I feel uh, uh, outside of India, things are a little bit more structured in terms of how you approach PR, uh, be it media relations, be it other aspects of comms, uh, like, uh, Abhishek said, if you are a global organization, if you have that scalability, it's easier because APAC is a new market. For example, for pod podcasts, one of in my agency life, one of our clients, we were exploring the idea. We could actually learn from my colleagues in Europe on how they've done it or in you know US, how they have done it. So this exchange of knowledge is really helpful. Um, but there are certain talent related challenges, which honestly, it's much, much bigger in other markets when it comes to, because in India, we still have a lot of talent pool, a large talent pool. A very big problem in our profession is expectations when the newbies come in. Emily in Paris, Sex and the City, it's kind of ruined <laughs> what we really do. I literally had an intern come up to come up to me and say that, you know, it's not as glamorous as I thought in Singapore. So I really feel that, you know, there needs to be a bit of expectation setting when this, these people come in. Um, you know, when I was doing the comp work, when I was doing the dossiers, I know it helped me because back in India, I knew which were the top five publications in every region. And that was what the dossier taught me. So it did add value. And I had people who kind of highlighted to me that why you are doing this. And you know, I think we really need to make sure that, of course, they need to develop strategies, but they really need all the legwork, all the experience to get to a stage where they'll be in a position to develop strategy. I studied comms. We are honestly taught how to do strategies in college, but I really don't think we are in a position to deliver it effectively if we have not been through those experiences that we have. Absolutely. The other thing. Yeah, very well. Sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. No, so I, I think uh, like, I mean, the comms landscape is definitely changing, but I will also want to highlight that a very important part is understanding relevance. Just because everybody is doing it does not mean you have to do it. For a B2B tech enterprise organization, a lot of things doesn't make sense that is out there. And something which nobody is doing might make sense for us. So I think it's very important to, you know, as an agency to guide your clients. I, I have people who feel that, you know, oh, we should be on this social media and that social media, we should do influencer management. And I really have to sit back and tell them that what is the ROI you are going to get? You're not reaching out to the people you want to. You find an alternative that is more relevant, definitely let's go and ahead and do it. But that relevance that, you know, cutting the noise, that's very important. So yeah, like I said, what makes news is similar. Um, I think in one major difference that I see is that a little bit of more maturity in the sense of the kind of content that um, reporters or journalists or editors expect is kind of slightly different. Uh, when I moved out of India, and honestly, I was in a bubble and I thought I have a pretty good writing skill uh, and when I came out of India, I realized, no, not really, <laughs> because I'm competing with people whose first language is English. And that's not mine. My, my first language is Hindi at home. So I definitely feel that, you know, uh, writing content while we have different departments sitting out in our agencies, 
it should be encouraged a little bit more. Hmm. And I'm not sure. I'm sure if people are already doing this, but I have seen a lot of people in our stream coming outside of India and really struggling because our job at that time focused so much on media relations hmm. that all these tech skills that we need, you know, like Abhishek said, that, you know, the realm of PR has expanded. You need to know certain other technologies. You need to be good at content. You know, you need to be good at bite-sized content, simplifying things. So this kind of training, I think, is very necessary to stay relevant. It's catching up in India. And I, I am very happy to see that agencies are definitely level up in terms of their content. And it's very important. I'll tell you a very funny incident. So I, when I was working in Australia, there was uh, in an agency setting and uh, somebody wrote an email to a finance team who's based in India. And the reply came, I will do the needful. And my colleague was like, what does she mean? And I'm like, she just means she'll do what's required. And that day I realized I will do the needful is a very colloquial sentence. Nobody outside of India understands what it means. So, I mean, it, it's just that, you know, when you're being a global, regional or global comms person, you will have to understand these nuances. You will have to understand what's colloquial, what your audience, wider audience would understand what they won't. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, good point that you brought in. And I think that kind of straight away uh, makes me move to Adil because that's the cultural part of the difference, yeah. you know, in the comm. So Adil, coming to you, how is the landscape there in uh, Bangladesh and how are you really navigating it uh, in comparison to the rest of the Asia pack. Hi, thank you, Mamta, and the rest of the panelists. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, especially as a, as a growing market, is no, an, an, it's not an exception. Uh, the emerging social media and digital audience has created immense opportunity here, as well as the challenges for the PR practitioners. Uh, so. Uh, as, as I said, that the growing economy has a lot of different challenges uh, in terms of people, audience, and the and and the and the growing up uh, the generations. I'll focus into a few points uh, just to highlight the challenges we face here uh, in this country and uh, in this economy. So nowadays, every PR agency almost every day facing challenges in digital media. Conventional media has like print or television. Uh, has orthodox approach, structured process, and the media relations, uh, which is very much in a systematic manner. However, challenges are widespread in social media and the digital platforms where the audience reacts very fast, good or bad, especially the bad words of mouth, uh, or incomplete or trimmed video, images, comments, goes viral like a bushfire. So there we need more focus and more tools to measure uh, professionals who can address credibly and meaningfully, especially uh, in the region like Bangladesh or Indonesia, which has large population, as well as different sorts of challenges and opportunities. Let me give you an example in the power and energy sector. Uh, and uh, as I told you, the, the growing economy is heavily dependent on the power and energy safety. So uh, in this sector, most of the large conglomerate has invested heavily in generations or in terminals or in the LPG distributions, besides their consumer durables, banking or FMCG, hospitals or other service businesses. Here the challenges comes for the corporate and their brands. Any issues on one sector goes wrong, immediately it affects the perception of the whole group or the con conglomerates. Now, there's another challenge just has uh, recently popped in is the Ukraine war and the global financial challenges. A few months back, Bangladesh faced a uh, fuel and coal shortage, which disrupted the power supply for a few weeks. Uh, and this coupled with devaluation of inflation has uh, impacted the inflation to uh, devaluation of the Taka has impacted the inflation to double digit which means not only the energy pricing, FMCG or other consumer durables has gone up significantly. So the false allegations like companies are becoming uh, East India company has gone viral. Problem triggers, especially in the digital media where few issues has become damagingly threatening for these companies. Uh, there's a number one, the 
widespread uh, the fake news uh, rampant on digital media, misinformations. Number three is the lack of uh, fact checks. Number four, habit of sharing whatever news anyone gets beyond WhatsApp or Rails, they, they spread it like, uh, like bushfire. So to address uh, these few steps, we, uh, I think we need to incorporate immediately. First, all peer practitioners should be equally equipped or prepared for the digital functions. Uh, so traditionally what we do, uh, still we do, is uh, that we, we are building up a new digital horizon to address digitally. I think that uh, current peer practitioner also needs to be equipped and prepared uh, to address this meaningfully and uh, with more, I uh, would say, credibly. The second, we need uh, to create a pool of practitioners, I mean, from a generation who are in 20s. And uh, because what they think, how they think, uh, is very important for the brands and corporate to understand. Before we really get into the PR solutions, we need to think what they talk and their language and the way they, con they consume the content. So this adaptation in the f uh, is the opportunity as well as the future, uh, I would say the alignment for the PR agencies. So most emerging economy in the region has, 50, uh, has uh, more than 50% population are at the age of 25. And Bangladesh has 68% population at the age of 30s or below 30s. So it's gonna be whole new interaction stories, perceptions we need to understand going forward for the brands, for the corporate and for the people. And uh, that's from my side from yeah, Bangladesh. I think, I think I hear you and what you're saying um, uh, in terms of a lot of emergence of these self-publishing platforms, which kind of dilute the whole idea of uh, the, the, the credibility of the communication. And that's really the crisis that we all are faced, not only Asia Pac, but globally. So bringing and highlighting that point, so, are we, when we are talking digital transformation and digital PR, et cetera, are we really able to make a good use of it to our benefit or are we just, uh, you know, doubling up our troubles? So Abhishek, you could take a jab at it and then I'll come to you, you Jyotsna. No, I, I want to pick up on, maybe try and kind of pick up on what Gargi said and then to an extent what everybody else said. I think it's, 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 it's also uh, coming down to data, right? Uh, I, mm. I mean, because I think data is becoming very, very key. And I think more importantly, if you look at it, and I can just speak from our example here, where I think it's getting important that we just move away from just, so while data-led monitoring and insights is, is becoming a standard norm, but I think we are reaching a point where we need to look at our audiences for more in terms of using data to understand what the intellectual and emotional connect uh, with brands is, uh, right? Uh, and I think what we are trying to get into is that how audiences are creating an emotional connect is becoming a key metric of how content strategy therefore needs to be uh, positioned. You, the standard form of whether how much coverage you got and things is just is good to do, but I think we've kind of moved beyond. And I think tools such as artificial intelligence, which you were also mentioning earlier, and therefore hyper personalization is becoming very very critical in terms of the way uh, we gain grounds and artificial intelligence is therefore kind of going to, I personally believe, going to become a mainstay in communication, right? Uh, and therefore, it's very important that technology today in communications kind of works through with our individual preferences, behaviors, and interests that we want to identify for our audience. Now, look at that as a data available and insights. So one is having data available, which is the, the what power part of it. And I think the journey that we're all making towards is what does it mean? What is the inside of that? And imagine power that you have in terms of your long form content, which is, I think, also the challenge that uh, people were highlighted. So then you need, once you have what, say, I as an audience is consuming, and therefore then I have the expert writers who can do long form content or short form content, the kind of communication strategy that we as agencies or communication experts can rely on is, is, is phenomenal, right? And I think what's going to happen also is in terms of what Adil was saying, and I want to just touch it at a very broader level. Uh, is that AI and tech is going to be central going forward. There, there is no doubt about it. It's it's a practice that's going to stand. Uh, and tech adoption will help communication teams with very quick analysis because you have that vast amount of data to identify potential risks. Now imagine a situation where you were reacting to risks 
to having the idea of what potential risks could be uh, from a reputation perspective that are going to come your way and then be prepared for it. And then if you are able to offer predictive insights into what potential crisis is, you're actually ahead of the game always in your communication and not always reacting to what's coming. And I genuinely feel that we have reached a stage where proactively addressing issues and mitigating potential reputational damages can help win a brand's win in the market. Now, also that data is now available for what uh, Adil was mentioning today, at least in India, I think there is enough tools that are available for fact checking and things like that. So I think the whole idea is that how do we kind of standardize that across uh, the world or Asia Pacific and, and our learning is really how we learn from each other to make it standardized. And I mean it from a communication perspective, how I learn from Adil and Adil learns from me is going to be the uh, the future of us kind of collaborating together as comms experts. Absolutely. Just like your, your words on this. I think tick, tick, check, check, whatever Abhishek has said, you know, and definitely makes sense, you know, but uh, I agree with the fact and I have been primarily uh, an agency person through and through and comms uh, or corporate is a pretty new uh, area for me, I would say just four months into corporate, but um, making the content relevant uh, to who it's being talked to and uh, also uh, catering it or mapping it to the brand nuances and crossing the barrier uh, uh, you know of just one particular language is not the all and end all of it you know how do you connect to the entire audience what is it that they are talking what is it that they are doing all of that needs to be made relevant to uh, you know, making it futuristic. And like, I mean, while all of us are talking about, you know, the future is data, etc. you know, um, sharper or laser sharp insights into consumer behavior, meaningful messaging, hyper uh, personalized customer service, etc. we are talking about. Uh, I just have one little question, you know, we are talking of an AI enabled future. Are our, um, you know, is the educational curriculum even integrating all of that, you know, mm -hmm. machine learning, AI, etc. How is it that we are, uh, you know, adapting to all of that? And then comes the bigger question, you know, uh, in the earlier session, also people were talking about AI, etc. and using it responsibly. Mm -hmm. So if I'm feeding in the data, which is not specific to me so i will not put in specific data about my organization because it will go to the wider world but that data which i put into uh, the ai uh, you know document that is there to churn out or to do my research is something that the tool takes on as a normal mm. you know now that it becomes more generalistic and leaves behind, you know, the nuances of the brand, uh, the, the brand that is there. So that's how critical it is. And it's important for us. And like Abhishek rightly said, it's important for all of us to collaborate. So if I as a brand understand that my um, uh, particular, I have a certain um, uh, TG that is there who's going to listen to a particular kind of messaging or narrative and probably Probably podcasting is the right way to go about it because that has a very niche, um, you know, focused uh, audience that is there. Then I'll go in for it. And that's a more targeted approach, you know. And or if I want to go in for something which is in only Singapore, how do I go about and target only that market? And what's the kind of so the language that I'm going to use or the kind of narrative I'm going to use in India is going to be very different from what it is going to be in Singapore. So coming back to you again, Mamta is culturally we need to understand how it works. You know, why did McDonald's come up with Alu Tikki Burger? You know, they had to resonate with the Indian audience. We had we use we, uh, I mean I've worked with a very leading automobile client. And they were leaders and aspirationally, they were very high and everybody wanted to buy the brand, but always felt it was not for me because it was more expensive, right? And we realized that uh, while in the metros, it was selling very well, in the smaller towns, it was not selling very well. And the reason was because they always thought it was more expensive. 
all we did, it's a simple little tweak in the um, strategic planning that we did for PR. And we said, we will take the brand to those centers. Mm -hmm. Let's identify those centers where they are not having enough sales and do certain interventions, PR interventions that are there. And let me tell you, in one year's time, those markets improved. Now, that is the data, uh, you know, that we are analyzing and coming back. And then each time you do an intervention, you also map and see how is it translating into the in terms of ROI, et cetera. You know, so though we always say that, you know, there is no direct impact on um, sales, et cetera, when it, uh, there's a PR intervention, but it does lead to some kind of attraction which is a positive traction and we need to take them. Sometimes you can do some amount of PR and you can have um, more followers on LinkedIn. You know, we've also had certain interventions. You know, you've done a lot of work on the social media um, platforms and then that has led to more followers. Probably people want to be associated. So yeah. these are small little things. How do we utilize those to our advantage is what we'll need to do in a collaborative manner, work with each other, understand, learn from each other. Yeah, I think, and just to add to that point, uh, it's just not about the ML or the AI. At the end of the day, who is behind that ML that is a human and who is ahead of that ML that is the human because ultimately that data has to be non-biased. It has to make sense. It has to be done with discretion and the right inputs needs to be given to the machine for it to throw out the right results. So well said. And I think we can't rest our case enough on, on, on AI alone. And uh, just in the interest of time, because this is a must, uh, you know, kind of a catch up uh, conversation Two, we, I would want at least one of you to address um, the part on how internal and external comms uh, management is playing an essential role in the overall health and vitality of any business, any brand, irrespective of its audience. So maybe Abhishek, you could, or Gagi, maybe you could take a go at it because this is something that we have actually not touched. <laughs> yeah, no, I can come in and I'll try and keep it short so that Gagi can come in too. I think I, I think a couple of points I want to make. I think internal and external, if you just... You know, I genuinely believe that we're reaching a point where we're, we're trying to address communication challenges for organizations, right? Uh, and I think it's very important for if we cut across tools from our life and say that we want to address communication challenges and then look at that as our benchmark to look at integration, both from an internal and external perspective, I think the world of communication is a much more easier world to see. Uh, we, I think, sometimes overwhelm it by saying, oh, I want to, you know, the answer to this is let's do, let's go do podcasts. Let's do, but we're not using data that we are saying. And again, what I'm saying that don't get overwhelmed by artificial intelligence. It is, you rightly said that it is actually going to be a great enabler to the communication expert in the future to say, now I have these data and insights and AI tools available to really create that integrated campaign, which is personalized to my audience. And it caters to the kind of content strategy across paid, earned, earned and short, sh uh, shared media to be, able to, to be able to personalize my campaign. And therefore, towards the end, then be able to showcase measurable, business impactful data to say, look, I have made a change. The constant battle that we've been having with, uh, and Jotsna was earlier on the agent side and now on the Copcom side will be saying, can you show me tangible results? And I think now, agencies have or are moving towards using these tools to create tangible results. And I completely agree. Let's artificial intelligence and all are going to be those data and insights are going to be are here for the future, but they're going to be an enabling function. So I think but that I think is very just important. Just to add to what you have said, yeah. it's also very important for brands to tell you what's the difference it's made because end of the day if there is more traction at my end uh, as a corporate communication person if there is any traction that is there in terms of sale there is uh, you know there are more people who've come on or uh, are following me on linkedin it's for the corporate communication team to collaborate with the agency and tell them hey this is the intervention you did basis which we've had this so then we can go back and you can make a system which is more effective no, just I, 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 I mean, I, I'll come back to Mamta and maybe on a side channel, I'd love to show you some of the data we're able to do in terms of not only how conversations have are fading and moving away over a period of time, but also actually go down 
to sentiment not just positive negative neutral but also come down to emotions of joy where we are able to kind of trigger out this announcement was it with your audience received with joy or what kind of emotion so i think that excess of data with the right kind of behavioral analytics is a is a great thing that's happening in the communication industry is just that these i genuinely believe that it's it's a great enabling tool for communication experts like us to see how we can bring it more into our campaigns and be really in, involved in what organizations and senior communication directors like you are kind to trying to achieve for your companies and brands yeah it will be great Would just uh, wrapping up thoughts uh, gargi your your parting note on this session <laughs> i i think one very important thing is i feel a lot of times when we talk about these technologies we only look at consumer brands hmm. uh, there are a lot of b2b brands that do not basically excite customers because they don't even know the role that guys and it's a very big challenge for us to you know kind of understand and tell the story in that way the, i mean it is simple if you think of it it's about talking about the impact forget yeah. about your product talking about the impact you create and your value proposition but uh, in when it comes to technology i completely agree it's an enabler will i be happy to rely on an ai when i'm in a crisis situation some parts yes some parts no i would be very happy for it to have a search box where i can see who all are talking about this i'll be very happy to see what's the precedence if somebody has been in this situation what they have done but definitely i would be more comfortable having a human front the whole strategy and do it for me yeah adil your uh, your last uh, thoughts on the discussion okay um uh, as abhishek was telling about the data and the uh, and the ai the importance of it i think the another area which just want to say the who is doing the analysis that's important how the interactions are transformed from the from the data uh, how they are interpreted to a solutions uh, in the pr and that's very important the people capacity development so i think this is the area where the data sir will will be there will be bombardment of data coming days from various media from various source from various machines the people analyzer who are doing that will do the analysis of it in a meaningful way is the key to address this in a successful way i think that's more important yeah let's not forget that whatever said and done even sitting right in this age in the middle and right under the nose of ai we've had fiascos like what has happened with the bon vita with food pharma and you know nestle and things like that so so this is a discussion to be continued forever and ever and a yeah. debate that can go on and on and i'm so glad that unanimously or each one of you did put in and roll in a point on podcast and uh, i'll be really happy current if you are listening e for m if you are listening to put together maybe a different discussion on we were all uh, we were all picking for a podcast with you <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and i would uh, call it a wrap we are listening we are listening <laughs> we keep our eyes and ears open <laughs> so on just the parting note i'd like to say the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about at all so let's keep the conversation going pr ai ml and uh, we'll keep coming back with more and more interesting uh, debates thanks karan thanks e for m thank you everyone thank you, so thank you for being uh, such a great panel i'm sure the audience would have loved we already have i think 178 registration but you will not see them there they are on the other platform okay but nonetheless i'll share the snapshot with you you can guys can have a look at it but really uh, great to have you all and some of you are also on the jury so great we look forward to see you again we have in another 20 to 25 what minutes we'll start announcing the winners of our 30 under 30 initiative this is our third year and so, most of you have been panel except gargi is a, you know adil has already won the best pr is uh, Uh, agency for the uh, from Bangladesh. In fact, we were doing something on Southeast Asia, so he was the first one who won it. The rest of you have been part, so thank you. We look forward to keeping. Same, same link for the same link for the awards. Yes. Yeah, look you. forward to connecting with all of you. Thank 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 you. Thank